Chapter 295 Rewinding a bit, right after absorbing the dragon pearl, a massive pillar of spiritual energy shot up into the sky from the divine tree. Hmm, it seems the power fusion process has begun. The old dragon knew the divine tree couldn't act at this moment, so he decided to handle everything else himself. The red demon's bombardment ravaged the ground, leaving smoke and dust everywhere. The old dragon stepped onto the battlefield, his eyes shining like stars. This time, the enemy was clearly one of the strongest beings on the planet, and he knew it well. Wardom mockingly scoffed, saying he thought the dragon king was that old man who died six months ago. Seeing him still alive and well was truly unexpected. The old dragon, enraged, shouted that even in death, he'd take Wardom down with him. Wardom dashed forward, declaring that this old man was all bark and no bite, just a flickering candle in the wind. Panis, on the other hand, dropped to her knees on the ground. Her whole body turned ashen with fear, gasping for breath, sweat pouring down all over. For the first time in her life, she was facing a power so overwhelming it felt impossible to escape death. The old dragon took a punch to the face, a blow so strong it could shatter a mountain. Struck by that hit, the old dragon's massive body collapsed to the ground, crushing an entire piece of land. Yet, as he fell, he managed to counter with a sharp arrow of spiritual energy, slicing through the air toward his foe. Unfortunately, with his physical speed, Wardom dodged it. No. His neck had been grazed by a slice, and blood began to flow. Inside, he was stunned, he was sure he had dodged it. But when he looked over, the old dragon was already hovering in midair, surrounded by dozens of razor-sharp spiritual shards, this was the dragon sword technique. The golden dragon immediately recognized the renowned skill his grandfather had used to conquer countless foes in the past. The old dragon roared, die, and simultaneously launched all the blue blades at his enemy. Wardom instantly realized the danger. This old man was trying to skin him alive. With such an overwhelming barrage of attacks, dodging was impossible, so he decided to face the blades head-on. The strike carried considerable damage, forcing Wardom to scream as he braced himself. Then, he used the strength in his arm to knock the dragon swords aside. Of course, fresh blood sprayed from his wounds as he did. Looking down, his index finger had been sliced. His whole hand scraped raw. Dealing with this old man was no easy feat but the attack continued. More dragon blades flew toward him. The old man's firepower was overwhelming his enemy, giving him no chance to retaliate. Several blades struck the red demons behind him, needless to say, their bodies were instantly sliced in two upon impact. Wardom was drenched in his own blood, having sustained numerous injuries, which only fueled his rage. He gritted his teeth and cursed. But how could this be? Wasn't this old man supposed to be weakened by now? He yelled, declaring that the old dragon shouldn't get so arrogant. He raised his right hand, and his spiritual energy transformed into a blazing fire. In the blink of an eye, his energy transformed into a massive battle axe, the very same axe he had used to slash the dragon king twice before. The old dragon continued relentlessly firing dragon blades at him. Then he crafted an upgraded dragon blade, larger, stronger, denser, and sharper. Truth be told, the Dragon King was growing weary, but he still shouted at Wardom, saying the Dragon Island wasn't a place he could just come and go as he pleased. Wardom, however, declared that this time he would cut the old dragon in half. With that, he swung his massive battle axe down. The axe blade collided with the dragon blade, causing everything around them to evaporate. In this clash, whoever had the stronger spiritual energy would be the victor. And once again, it happened, the old dragon couldn't understand. Just like before, Wardom's axe somehow pierced through his upgraded dragon blade. Damn it, the axe was aimed straight for his head, and its power was absolute. Taking that axe blow, the old dragon let out a piercing scream of agony. His massive body crashed to the ground, blood splattering everywhere. And so, the Dragon King, the strongest on the planet, had been defeated, 
now lying beneath Wardham's feet. Wardom acknowledged that the old man's last attack had indeed been far stronger than before, but he was still the stronger one, and he swung another axe blow, aiming straight for the old dragon's eye. The strike immediately left a deep gash near the old dragon's left eye, and Wardom was thrilled. The red dragon, witnessing this, could only cry out in anguish, calling for his grandfather. Then he shouted, Let him go! But at that moment, the space beside him shattered. A pitch-black dragon appeared right next to the red dragon, pinning him to the ground. As he arrived, he greeted the red dragon, Long time no see. The newcomer was none other than the black dragon of the dragon clan, a traitor. The red dragon couldn't believe he dared to return here. Meanwhile, Wardham's axe was now drenched in blood. Clearly, the old dragon's scales were tougher than usual, making it quite difficult to execute him. All right then, let's see how many more strikes you can withstand. The old dragon could only watch helplessly, too drained to resist any longer. While Wardom was caught up in the thrill of tormenting his defeated foe, something suddenly sliced the back of his neck. What the hell? Surprise. It was Panis. She had shot an arrow into his neck, telling him to let the old man go. Though still fearful, Panis couldn't bear to watch such a heartbreaking scene any longer. End of chapter 295